Patricia, why don't you tell us a little bit about uh, glutaramine acetate? So glutaramine acetate uh, consists of random polymers of four amino acids. It's a biophysical analog of myelin basic protein. It was really discovered at, at the Weizmann where they were looking at peptides that induced an animal model of MS called EAE and glutaramine acetate paradoxically protected against it. And so they began to study it in MS. Glutaramine acetate has two major claims to fame. Number one, it's the only disease modifying therapy that requires no laboratory monitoring whatsoever. That's kind of a, a stamp of approval with regard to great safety and tolerability. As pointed out, it's not an immunosuppressive. Uh, it's an immunomodulator, as are the interferon betas. Secondly, it has the widest human pregnancy exposure, thousands of cases, absolutely no signal, at least hundreds of MS women treated during pregnancy. So you don't need a washout. You could use it during pregnancy. You could use it with breastfeeding. So those are two dramatic statements that kind of promoted very safe, no monitoring, the best documented DMT for pregnancy. The mechanism of action is really not known for sure, but it creates regulatory T cells that appear to be very, very helpful. It kind of shifts to a T helper two type profile. So there's a cytokine switch. It has a potent effect on antigen presenting cells. So there's an innate uh, immune component to glutaramine acetate. And you see increase in neurotropic factors like BDNF. So all of those have been postulated to perhaps be, you know, uh, mechanisms of action. Although precisely, we've been using it for years. We really don't know. Oh, good. Wallace, thoughts on GA? Yeah, so I, I think that uh, like the interferons, there's still a role for uh, this injectable therapy, but the, the role is diminishing. Um, I think it can be a particularly attractive treatment option uh, for women who are planning pregnancy and again for patients with comorbidities. Ben? Yeah, there's not so much uh, left to add. I can only uh, support Wallace and uh, Patricia. This is uh, the same reason why we are still using glutaramine acetate in Germany, especially for, for um, patients starting family planning and um, based, based on the safety profile of this, of the, of this drug. Right. So, so this one kind of been interesting in, in the terms of the population that comes in. So there are, there's a population of patients who come in to see us. And when we start to talk about disease modifying therapies, they'll sort of say, how long has that drug been around? And as soon as they ask that question, I know where the conversation is going to go because pretty soon I say, well, I worry about what I put in my body, you know, what's the safest thing you have? Now we know there's some people who come in and say, what's the best thing you have? Uh, but there's a significant percentage of come in, what's the safest thing you have? And they, and because they worry about, they worry about side effects and, and things of that sort. And that's a group that I start and still start on, on glutaramine acetate. So that one I still have starts on for just that reason. Uh, the other is, is, as was brought up, people who are thinking about planning a family sometime soon, it's a very good agent to deal with in that regard. Um, and, and of course, like interferon, because GA came out in 1997, we also have a large cohort of individuals who are taking their injections. Most of them switch to three times weekly from daily. The other thing is you brought up spend uh, I can think of one patient who was being treated with uh, chemotherapeutic agents um, and also needed to have their MS uh, treated. And it was a good addition in that, uh, in that situation.